Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video. My name is Erica Stice and I'm so excited to show you texturing and annealing today. So I'll show you annealing at the end of the um, video, so keep your eyes out. But right now let's start with texturing. First I'd like to show you um, some textured pieces that have already been done so that you can kind of see what texturing looks like. This is a copper and a brass um, cuffs that were textured by students here. And you can see the he heavy texturing and these are really nice. You, you, they textured on the outside right here with a square punch and then right here it was lines and they've both been patinaed and you can see that they skipped this middle part right here. So you can kind of hand stamp or something fun in there. So texturing is really fun and you can use it on a lot of things, not just cuffs. So this piece I made um, a while ago and this one was textured with a flex shaft. So if you look at the patterns on it, the patterns are done with the flex shaft attachment, which was a diamond point. And I dug the crevices in with that. And then if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see the claws in the piece, but those were textured as well with cutting tools on the flex shaft. Here's another cuff. This one's sterling silver. And Hillary did this in one of her classes. She cold connected this bezel cup with a stone on it. So it's a cold connected piece. If you're not comfortable with soldering yet, there'll be videos on that, but we have a lot of videos on our YouTube page on soldering, but this is cold connected, so no heat. And this last piece was done heavily with a hammer. I textured this, and then I put on a, um, I put it under the torch for the color to get some color out of the copper. So let's go ahead and texture a piece. I have a little strip of copper here. And I just want to show you how I learned how to um, texture. So grab a marker, a permanent marker, and go ahead and make lines in to divide your piece. As many as you want to use. As many lines as you want to make. And always use copper when you practice. I highly suggest that because silver is really expensive. And this can also end up being a, a practice plate and you can kind of see what um, hammers use what tools, especially if you have good writing on the back that kind of explains what you use to texture with, what hammer, um, what attachment you used. And that way you can come back and kind of see it before you put the texture on your final piece. Now you never want to put your finger on top of the handle. Don't ever do that because if it kicks back, it can break your finger. So get out of the habit of that and just lightly hit it like this. Try and keep your marks on the, on the inside of your mark so that you can kind of differentiate between the two. And you always want to hammer on a bench block. And the sandbag is optional, but it deadens the noise, so it deadens the noise a little bit, so it helps. So it's not quite as loud because this is a really loud technique. Now this is a smaller ball peen, so you'll see the marks will be slightly tinier. So if you could see between those. Now let's go on to the riveting hammers. That's these. And they'll do the lines in your piece. You can see that. Now if your piece starts coiling, it's getting work hard in, and this side's really soft and easy to move. This side's really hard. So you'll want to flatten that back out. And whenever you flatten out um, any metal, you want to go ahead and use a rawhide or a nylon hammer. Rawhide hammers will not mar your metal. They won't mark it or anything. So it's just a really quick way to flatten things back out without destroying your work. So this is a must-have hammer. Now let's use this one. Now this is a heavy, heavier riveting hammer. So the line should be nice and dark, deep. You can see how much it's coiling. 
my cuff blank again. So I'll just flatten that back out. Now you can kind of see the differences in the marks. And now let's try these fun texturing hammers. I love these. Okay, so I'll try the square one first. See the marks that one made. Let me flip it over and show you the hatch hatch marks, and that's the opposite side. Let's see if you can see that one. That one's subtle; it doesn't imprint as hard. Okay, so at this point. The next step you want to do is you want to anneal your piece. It's so hard right now that it can actually get brittle and break if you push it too far and continue to do, move that metal. So the next thing you want to do is you want to anneal it, which takes heat. So let me go ahead and set that up and I'll show you how to anneal. Okay, everyone, I've now set up the studio bench to do the annealing part of this. So we've already textured the cuff. And now what we want to do is we want to soften the metal back up because right now it's work hardened and really difficult to bend. So let's go ahead and soften it back up. And how you do that is with a torch and a lot of flame and heat. So I've set up the soldering station. Now make sure safety's number one, tie up your hair. I have an apron on to protect my clothing. And anytime you want, you use a torch, you definitely want to tie up your hair. So let's go ahead. Now I've brought over the torch and I have a big tip on it so I can get a lot of heat on this copper. I've also got copper tongs and a quench bowl of water so that I can dip the hot metal into it when I'm finished heating it. I also have an um, electric um, torch lighter right here that I'll use to turn the torch on. So let's get going. All right, so I'm gonna put the torch in my non-dominant hand because I always wanna hold something in my dominant hand. And we have a lot of videos online about soldering, so feel free to check our YouTube videos out. And right now I'm gonna keep the torch moving back and forth. And the cool thing about this is when you have permanent marker on here, the torch will actually make the um, marker disappear and that's when you know your metal is annealed. Just a little tip, it'll disappear. So just keep your torch moving back and forth. And when you see the permanent marker lines disappear, you know your piece is annealed. So turn your torch off, set it to the side, and pick up your metal. And this is very, very hot, so use copper tongs and dip it into your quench bowl. Now the quench bowl, you can totally touch it now because it cools it right down. And now you want to make sure you clean it, you get that water off of it. Because the water can damage any of your tools, hammers and stuff, cause, can, can cause rust later on. So make sure you dry it. Now, <clears throat> your soldering station is going to be hot, so be careful. Don't put your arms on it right yet. You want to let that cool down. And now you can see that the lines are gone. And this has become very soft. And you can easily bend it around a bracelet bending block, a mandrel, whatever you use to shape it. Um, or you can just leave it straight and go ahead and use it as kind of like a pattern for future, for future um, texturing work. And kind of, you can kind of make notes and stuff on the back to write what tool you used, what hammer you used and things, um, and use that as a guide for your next jewelry design. So anyway, thank you for watching. Oh, and leave in your comments what is your favorite texturing tool, whether it's a hammer, file, sandpaper, um, whatever tools you use, attachments for your rotary tools, let us know. It's interesting. I like to try new things too. So anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.